Um, continuing to share with you uh, some concepts from uh, the verse 1 John 4.19, uh, which uh, one of my very favorites says, we love him, God, because he first loved us. And one of the concepts here that I learned is uh, in the the Bible is divided into two parts. One is called the Old Testament, of course, and the other is called the New Testament. And the dividing point of that really is uh, Jesus. Uh, from the time of Jesus on is the New Testament, and before Jesus came was the Old Testament. But uh, really they, they were more based on the idea of an old covenant and a new covenant. So under the Old Covenant was what was called Mosaic Law. It's the, the Ten Commandments and a, and a very large set of laws that uh, God gave to uh, Moses, the prophet Moses, thousands of years ago, and then Moses gave those laws to uh, to the nation of Israel to follow. And the covenant, the old covenant, was based entirely on law, and it was based on man's performance. And the idea was, you know, here's the Ten Commandments: you shall not murder, steal, lie, commit adultery; you shall honor your parents, have no other gods before me. Those these types of commandments. And the idea was that if a person perfectly fulfilled all of these laws, perfectly obeyed all of these laws, then that person would, in fact, earn eternal life, their place in, in God's kingdom, uh, God's heaven, and uh, they, would, uh, they would qualify for this. Uh, however, there was really a point to the law that uh, people kept missing for a long time, which was a fallen man who was infected by sin was absolutely incapable of keeping God's laws and God's commandments. Uh, man, because of that sin nature, would repeatedly sin in one way or another, breaking God's commandments. Even if, even if he wasn't committing adultery, man would still lust. Even if he wasn't murdering, man would still hate. And, and so what, uh, what the whole purpose of the law was to, is it was to expose the, uh, the, the human race to, the, to their need for a savior, their desperate need for a savior who would come in and, uh, and save them and give them eternal life, give them forgiveness of sins. That would be Jesus, of course. Uh, the law was never intended to uh, give us life. It could not give us life. In fact, all the law could do was convict us of being sinners who desperately needed a savior. Now, under the under the Old Covenant, there was two very famous laws that were given um, that Christians still quote all the time today. One was, you shall love the Lord your God, right, with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. And the other commandment was, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And uh, under the law, again, please remember, keep in mind that these were commandments that a person was supposed to perform by their own power, supposed to love God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your strength, all of your will, all of your being, all of your life. And, uh, and we were supposed to love our neighbor just as we loved ourselves with that same perfect standard. Um, both of these commandments, even though Christians quote them all the time, both of these commandments are in fact impossible. Uh, no person besides Jesus has ever loved God with all of their heart, and no person beside Jesus has ever loved uh, our fellow man as ourselves. And so again, these laws were not actually meant to save us. They were actually meant to expose our need for a savior. Now in the new covenant, when Jesus came, the innocent one who died on the cross for our sins rose from the dead. And now if we believe in him, if we call on the name of Jesus, he breathes his spirit into us and we are born again and we have uh, a new spirit, a new heart, a new nature, and the Holy Spirit of God literally lives on the inside of us. And now by his grace, we are living an entirely new life as a born again child of God. Uh, really the moment you get born again, you're a spiritual baby. And, uh, and then... 1 John 4.19 is really the covenant we are in. It says, we love God. Why? Because he first loved us. In the new covenant, there is not a commandment to love God or to love our neighbor as ourself. Uh, Jesus did say, love one another as I first loved you. And what he's actually uh, showing us here is that God loves us first now and we receive his love. And so the, uh, the thing I want you to understand is, we are, as Christians, we're not under a commandment to love God or a commandment to love our neighbor. What we are actually in is a covenant where we literally get born again, we become God's literal born again sons and daughters, and God loves us first. Now, he pours his love into our hearts, we learn to receive it, and as we receive his love, and we get filled up with his love, we begin, first of all, then to genuinely love God, not out of a commandment, but because we love him back. He first loved us, and now we just love him back. And then we begin to genuinely love 
our, our, our neighbor, as the Bible says, that, that could mean our wife or husband, our children, our friends, our family. We quite literally begin to love people with an unconditional love because God's love is filling us up and flowing through us. And then we even love ourselves because the commandment was to love your neighbor as yourself. We now quite literally lo- begin to love ourselves in a healthy way. I'm not talking about a selfish way or an arrogant way. I'm talking about a very healthy way of valuing ourselves and loving ourselves as well and uh, and taking care of ourselves. And when you, by God's grace, love God, love one another and love yourself, the, the original intent of God is fulfilled. God is love and he wants his people to walk in love. But this is a work of his grace, not a work of religion, not a work of law. This is a work of God's miraculous spirit at work in our hearts and a, and a, product, a product of his grace in our lives. And I pray today that you'll have that uh, great revelation, begin to, to receive God's love and be revolutionized and transformed by God's love. Mm-hmm.